Hey guys, this is Angie, also known as The Light. Welcome to my channel. Like, subscribe, and if you'd like to make a donation, um, my PayPal information is usually in my description box. Okay, excuse my appearance. I already took my shower for the evening. I took off all my makeup, so I just have on my real face and lip gloss. So, But anyway, it's not really about appearance. It's about these narcissists and healing and I said you know what I have to get this out because I don't know why but I'm such a night person that all these ideas and you know all these thoughts come to me in the evening but then again I'm tired so sometimes you may see me in the video looking a little tired okay I want to talk about how the narcissist brings on depression of course you're you know you're um in this abusive emotionally mentally spiritually you know abusive relationship with the narcissist and um with abuse with mental abuse with emotional abuse is going to naturally come depression you're not going to be happy about you know your abuse you're going to be Sad as hell, basically. So, um, with that depression, you know, um, some people cover it up, as I did. I covered up my depression. Some people can't cover up their depression, you know. Friends and family eventually find out, or they're wondering what the hell is going on with you, what's going on with this person, you know. And, um, you know, but I know a lot of us we covered up the depression in order to basically um appear sane to our friends and our family or just to the public um i suffered with depression for many 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 years <laughs> half my life and i feel like i am officially healed from that spirit of depression. Now, I do think that some mental illnesses is a spiritual attack, meaning a demonic force. And then I, I do feel that some mental illnesses is a chemical imbalance, you know, um, from when you were being developed in a womb, basically. So I don't think that every mental illness you can take a pill to cure yourself. I don't think so. Okay, so I think my depression is one, a generational curse um, through my family line. Um, and I also think that depression came from a learned behavior because my mother, you know, watching my mother be depressed, so depressed and loving and caring for her and being an empath, I basically took on her habits. You know, um, sometimes you think that you're hiding things from your children, but you're really not. You know, your children don't know how to verbalize how they feel, you know, um, their concerns for you. You may be pretending that you're happy, but your children are actually feeling everything that you're going through. And if you later on you talk to your kids when they get older, I'm sure they're going to tell you, yeah, I remember you were sad, mom. I remember you were sad, dad. Um, my mother was always depressed, you know, even though she tried to play it off. And I felt like I learned that behavior. And then even, you know, when she was comfortable enough, I was about... 13 when she started to like drink in front of me or 12 years old so she started to actually drink and you know drink in front of me I never saw her drunk but she did drink um like you know rum and coke or wine coolers baileys you know like an irish cream she started to just drink different things in front of me and um to cope with her depression and even when depression the spirit of depression hit me that's what I did also. So yes, I did become depressed. I became depressed from being around, you know, my narcissistic stepfather being raised by a narcissist. Then anytime something happened in my life, whether it was my parents getting divorced, whether it was my mother getting cancer, 
you know, um, having issues with friends, having issues with men, you know, boys when I was younger, you know, just any little drama, I fell into this deep, deep depression, basically. And it's weird because depression for me, it never really felt something that was internal. It's something that felt, I felt was like something hovering over me outside of my body. I never felt like it was coming from the inside. I felt like any time I was going through something, any time I was sad, I felt like I was, I basically, I felt like I was being attacked. I couldn't explain it back then, but I can explain it now that I have a little bit more, you know, um, experience when it comes to certain particular spirits and, you know, demonic influences. Um, as I got older and I started to study about different spirits, different demons, different levels, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, once you start studying the spirit world, you know, um, that's when I felt like, you know what, this is definitely a spirit that's attacking me. And I don't think that, you know, I have some type of, you know, um, imbalance in the brain pretty much. Um, I had got so depressed that there was days that I didn't leave my room. There was days I didn't shower. This was in my early 20s. I remember there was there was a time in my 20s where I didn't, I couldn't leave my room. I felt like I couldn't even get up. I, it, you know how people talk about sleep paralysis? It wasn't like a sleep paralysis, but it was as if I just couldn't get up at all. I felt like something was holding me down um, to the point where I, I'm not going to lie. One, a, a few times, I didn't even want to go to the bathroom to pee. I peed in a bottle, guys. This is how depressed I got. I freaking peed in a bottle. And when I peed in a bottle to avoid seeing family members, interacting with them, that's when I knew, Angie, you have to get control of your life. You have to get up. You have to get up. I would literally lay in my bed and just talk to myself, not out loud, but in my mind, like, what is wrong with you? You have to get up. And then I met, you know, one of the long-term relationship, you know, that I had with a narcissist. I met him when I was 21, you know, which is very young. And I did not realize that he was actually making me even more depressed. Um, I had a swarm, you know, a whole bunch of um, narcissistic friends. So my narcissistic friends were making me depressed. My mother having cancer <laughs> made me depressed. Me being in this narcissistic relationship made me depressed. And I was being drained I mean I put on this front you know everyone thought I was just like this cool girl everybody wanted to hang out with everybody wanted to be with but secretly when no one was watching I was in this pool of darkness basically I never felt like I was going to try to kill myself um but I did remember a few times like waking up going, I'm here still. Really, God, I'm here still. You know, when I look back on like where I came from, it's it's just amazing to me because a lot of people who experienced that actually went through through it and killed themselves. And um if you are experiencing depression, even if there's like a moment where you do have a little bit of strength, see a therapist if you can't afford it, if you have insurance, talk to somebody. Or when people do come to you and they want to help you, just let them help you. Don't worry about the embarrassment. Would you want your life? Or, you know, would you just want, you know, would you not want your life? Or are you just going to, you know be able to get yourself together can you just deal with a little bit of embarrassment for the moment or do you rather be dead and I'm telling you if you're still here 
you have a reason to, that you're here. You're called to be here. Your, your, your journey is not over and why shorten that journey? Why? We don't know. I mean, there could be other lies. You want to do it all over again? I don't want to do it all over again. I mean, honestly, I do not want to come back to this planet. If there are other lies, I don't want to come back here. Mm -mm. Nope, nope, no, no. But anyway, there are just so many ways to try to get out. If you don't believe in God, then I'm telling you right now, this is what you need to do. You need to get your ass up. You have to get up. I'm telling you, there are days I know where you can actually get up, get help. Check yourself in to a clinic if you can afford it. Go to family, friends, and say, yo, I need help. Okay? Call hot, call a depression hotline, suicide hotline. Do whatever you can. Go to a church. <laughs> Do whatever you can to get yourself out of that. But what I had to do once I learned that, once I felt that this was a demonic possession over me, um, I called on my creator and I asked him, please, you have to remove this spirit of depression. This, this, the, I said a prayer, basically. I said a generational curse prayer. They have some on YouTube that you can look up. Um, different prayers that you can um, say in order to remove generational curses and it does take time it wasn't something that was just like overnight it was just like as time passed on it became less and less and less for me to fall into that depression I give myself a two-day rule I allow myself to lay around and be sad and be depressed and all that shit <laughs> for two days and that is it I don't go past two days ever. And even now, it doesn't happen. No matter how sad, how difficult my situation is, I do not fall in depression. I'm telling you, I don't know about your God, but my God helped me and he removed um, desperate depression from me. I still suffer from anxiety. That's something I would love to have removed from me. It's terrible. But honestly, the first thing you have to do, you cannot get, you ever heard the statement, you kill the quote, you cannot get clean in a dirty place. Okay. Stop trying to hold on to the narcissist. You cannot be asking God or trying to get help, trying to heal. And you're holding on to the narcissist still sleeping with them, remaining married to them. Um, living with them, if you can get away from these narcissists, let them go. There's no way in hell you're going to remain in that depression when you're around these narcissists. They are the cause of your depression. Or they are the trigger for your depression, basically. They are triggering this, pretty much. They either brung it on, or it's a generational curse that's in your family, and it's awakened that spirit to F with you pretty much. Um, another thing, some of us, we have to realize our environment. Yes, get rid of the narcissist, but also sometimes our environment can be very stressful. And you need to get into nature. I know some places it's winter, but if you live somewhere where it's always sunny, great. Go to the beach. Go to the park, sit down, people watch, go to the zoo, go to the aquarium, um, take a painting class, you know, get around people, get outside, get sunlight, lay on the grass, put your toes in the grass, <laughs> go walk in the woods, go fishing, go hiking, get in nature, okay? You need fresh air, sunlight is it is a must. You need sunlight. You need to touch nature because it just brings you back to your natural state. It it just it basically it is is a healing process. You need nature. You need air. You need sunlight. Your body needs it. Okay, um, in order to heal, it it makes you feel so so much better i live in new york city and i love when it's summertime i'll go to the beach you know by myself and i'll stay there for like hours at least five or six hours i'm at the beach by myself 
or I'll go to Central Park, you know, and walk around. It's different things that you can do even if you live in the city. I don't care if you live in the ghetto. There's a park. There's somewhere you can go. If not, get on the bus, get on the train, ask for a ride, and go to the next town or the next city or the next state or the next country if you can't afford it. If you can't afford it, take vacations or take a vacation alone. Um, you have to also watch your diet too because some foods can depress you. You know, um, meat, I love chicken. But I know that with meat comes energy because of how the meat was killed. I'm not telling you to be vegetarian or vegan or anything because I'm not that. You know what I'm saying? Right now, I... I'm eating um, fish. I'm trying not to eat chicken and beef and all that other stuff. Um, but that also holds different type of energies because of how animals are, you know, taken, raised and groomed and cleaned and how they're slaughtered, how they're killed. So you're holding on to that energy. And it's not just, you know, because meat isn't healthy or anything like that, but because of the energy that's on the particular animal you don't know what that animal story was and you're basically whatever that animal felt you're taking it in your body as well so please watch the things that you eat watch the people you're around watch how much nature you're in and those start to um decline not feeding that depression spirit basically music music is very important also Watch the kind of movies you li watch. Watch, um, you know, the the um, type of TV you're watching, movies. Um, start to feed your spirit with just more positive um, music. You know, I mean, I don't know. I don't listen to opera, but maybe opera. Maybe jazz. You know, something just more soothing or even like... Sometimes I'll just go on YouTube and I'll just type in ocean sounds and that will pop up and I listen to ocean sounds. I mean, you know, um, birds chirping. They have all these and these things sometimes will go on for four hours straight. You can even put that on when you're sleeping. That's another thing. You have to try to get good rest. You have to drink plenty of water. You know, um, try to cut down your social media time. These all affect your brain and affect your healing. And it's going to help you eliminate that depressed feeling. Another big thing is how you speak to yourself. Okay, I get it. I know when you're with the narcissist, when you're around them, they talk to you like shit. They make you feel like shit. So you start to mentally talk to yourself like you're shit. I'm going to need you to reverse that and take post-its and write certain things on these post-its and put them on your mirror, put it in your car, put it on your fridge. I don't care where you put it, put it on your forehead and write different notes to yourself so you can constantly see these things every day. I'm not stupid. I'm not ugly. I'm beautiful. I will be mad. I will get married. I will have children. I will make money. I will be successful. And write those things on these post-its. You can also do a vision board. I have a vision board in my bedroom. A vision board is basically um you can take a, like a po like a big poster board and you go through magazines and you cut out different things that inspire you. Or whatever you may want for your future. And you stick them with glue, with tape, whatever it is. And you put that on that poster board, okay? And you're looking at that that vision board. It's it's just giving you a constant reminder that you have, that you have hope. You have faith. You have a future that's coming. And when you see that, it alters your brain pattern. We have to basically alter our brain pattern to a normal state because the narcissist rewired us. You have to rewire yourself. Healing takes work. 
It's not easy. Just like it wasn't easy how the narcissist had to use all these manipulation tactics to rewire your brain, you're going to have to manipulate yourself in a positive way to rewire your brain. So no, this isn't easy. This is going to take work, okay? But all these things I'm saying, I don't always want to just give you information and I tell you how I did it, how to do it. Like, it doesn't make any sense. This isn't just everything that you can do. These are just small gems I'm trying to drop to you. Small advice, small tips of different things that I do on a consistent basis. This is not something that I just stop doing. No, I don't like, oh, I'm healed. It's okay. I'm good. No, like, mm -mm. I always do. I'm always aiming to be a better person. You know, I'm with y'all too. I'm healing still too. I'm not all the way healed um, yet. I'm not where I was, but I am still doing all these steps that I'm telling you right now that you can do in order to eliminate your depression. But the number one thing, you have got to stop complaining. You have got to stop talking negatively to yourself because words put many curses on you. Okay, and the narcissists are always putting curses on you. And sometimes, like if a narcissist says something negative to you, I mean, sometimes I, I snap back at, at narcissists. They'll say, "Oh, you're stupid." I'll say, "Well, it takes one to know one." Or they'll say, "You're ugly." I'll say, "Thank you." You're fat. Oh, really? Thanks. I know I am. Thank you. They hate that shit. They hate it. But it works. It works. That's how I survived seven years living with my narcissistic grandmother. There was many, many times that, oh, you're a whore. I'll say thank you. At least I'm getting some. Have a good day. And they just look at you like, when they think they can't get to you, and there was days, of course, the things she said to me got to me. But don't show it. They can't see inside of you. Front. Fake it. Fake it till you make it. Fake it until you heal. But I'm not just telling you that, you know, there are some people who do actually need medication. Do need some psychiatric examination. So if you do feel like you're hearing voices, you know, you're seeing things, you know, it could be a lot deeper than depression. Yes, go seek professional help. But also, in the midst of that, ask your creator to guide you through it, ask for help, okay? Don't just sit there. Don't be afraid. There's a lot, there's millions and built. There's millions of people who are experiencing the same thing that you're experiencing. It's so sad. I had a friend and um, her um, brother-in-law just killed himself two weeks ago, shot himself. And that, like, broke my heart. He was in his early 30s, left two children, you know? And it, it, it's just really sad, like... And it's crazy because when people kill themselves, family members are just like, why didn't they talk to me? It's hard. Like, it's embarrassing. You know what I'm saying? It's really embarrassing. I know I've been there, even though I didn't think of suicide. But I know what it is that you want to appear strong. But, yo, like, if you're not strong, you're just not strong in that area. You know? So if you do have family, you do have friends, there are plenty of facilities out there google it we all have cell phones so i don't want to hear it or you can go to your local mcdonald's or your dunkin donuts or whatever some restaurant they usually have free wi-fi so even if your phone is not connected you can still get access to wi-fi and look it up and secretly go get help okay so I hope these tips were helpful to you, and I want you to realize you cannot get clean in a dirty place. In order to heal from depression, you have got to remove these narcissists out of your life first. Because they are feeding, they are feeding that spirit of depression to you. All right, peace and blessings. Hopefully this information was helpful to you because it's still helpful to me too on a daily basis. Talk to you soon.